So let us talk about MRI of the liver. As we know that MRI has a high contrast resolution. It can provide morphological and physiological information. And it's not an ionizing radiation like CT scan. And it's not operator dependent like ultrasound. So the basic protocol for MRI liver is T1 and T2 sequence, in and out of phase T1, MRCP, diffusion weight image, and T1 with contrast. Let us talk about T1 sequence. So a normal liver should demonstrate uniform T1 signal intensity, similar or iso-intense to paraspinal muscles. As we can see this left loop of the liver, comparing with the paraspinal muscle. Also, it's a little bit more intense than the spleen. The things that are bright in T1 are fat, hemorrhage, and melanin, and some paramagnetic contrast. The things that appear dark on T1 include iron, water, air, bone, or calcifications, and collagen. So as we can see this axial T1 image of a patient with large HCC, we can see it contains the hyperintense foci that represent hemorrhage. This is another T1 image in a patient with a melanoma, and we can see multiple T1 hyperintense foci in the liver that represent melanocytic melanoma metastasis. And this is a patient with hemochromatosis, and as we said, that iron appeared dark on T1. So we can see significant drop of the liver signal due to iron deposition. Now in phase and out of phase T1, it's useful to identify fat within the liver parenchyma or within liver lesions like adenoma or SCC. And also it's important to differentiate between fat and hemorrhage. Before we start, how we know this is in phase or out of phase? Usually the out of phase image can be identified by chemical shift artifact along the periphery of the organ that contains both fat and water. As we can see, this hypointense rim surrounding the liver, surrounding the bowel, spleen, also in this patient, this is the in phase and out of phase because this dark rim surrounding the liver, kidney, and bowel. So let us zoom here. So this is the same patient of HCC that we saw previously. This is out of phase T1 image showing large HCC with internal hyperintense areas that may represent fatty or hemorrhagic foci. During in phase, we can see there is some foci that lost their signal that indicating fat and other signal remain high which indicating hemorrhage. So this is a typical case of HCC with some hemorrhagic foci and some fat globules. This is another patient with hepatic adenoma. As we can see in phase, it's iso intense and drop signal in out of phase sequence. This is another case of liver hemangioma. As we can see in this T2 image, it's very bright T2. It's hypo intense in T1 and no difference between in and out of phase. But also we can see that the drop of liver signal in the out of phase comparing with in phase, which indicating fatty liver. So this is a hemangioma in hepatic steatosis. It's also important to know that if the lesion is 100% fat, there will be no signal loss between in and out of phase. As we can see in the subcutaneous tissue, there is no drop of signal between in and out of phase. So in and out of phase, it's useful to identify intracellular fat. As in this case of HCC, it's also useful in case of suprarenal adenomas. And if we want to suppress extracellular fat, we have to use another fat suppression techniques. Okay, T2 sequence. The things that appear bright in T2 include fluid, edema, fat, and most of the liver lesions. Also, T2 image are generally obtained with fat suppression technique. As we said, most of the lesions appear bright on T2, but are not as bright as cysts or hemangiomas. 
So T2 is useful in characterization of benign lesions such as cysts and hemangioma. As we can see, this lesion is as bright as the bladder. So it can be either cysts or hemangioma. And after further studies, it turned to be hemangioma. And this is T2 fat cell sequence of two different patients. We can see the hyperintense lesion that's seen here and here are much less brighter than this lesion. And this one is turned to be FNH and this turned to be an FCC. MR cholangiopancreatography is a type of heavy T2 sequence with very long time to echo and long time to repeat. It's useful if pancreatic or biliary disease is suspected. We usually look for alteration of the duct caliber or signal void within a biliary tree, which can be due to calculus or a mass. And as we can see in this example in a patient with a large cholangiocarcinoma that causes obstruction and dilatation of intrahepatic biliary radicals. And also we can note normal size CBD. We can do also 3D MRCP using maximum intensity projection to look for biliary tree in 3D projection. Diffusion with image, actually most of the lesion will appear bright on DWI, either benign lesion, tumor necrosis, tumors, recurrence, FNH, abscesses, all will appear bright on DWI. Some of them will be restricted, so there will be low ADC map, as in case of tumor, recurrence, FNH, and abscesses. So as we can see in those examples, there is a bright signal in this patient, another bright signal in this, this patient also, and multiple bright diffusion weight signal in this patient. The ADC map of the first patient showing posterior hypointensity that indicating restricted diffusion in this area. And this lesion turned to be an HCC. This lesion here, with high diffusion weight image show no restriction in ADC map and it's turned to be FNH which sometimes can be show restricted diffusion. The third patient has multiple liver lesions that appear bright on diffusion weight image as well as an ADC map and it's turned to be liver adenomatosis. So the importance of DWI is to localize the abnormality Okay, let us talk about contrast enhanced image. It's performed using IV administration of gadolinium chelate contrast media and only 10 cc of contrast used in MRI comparing with the 100 cc on CT scan. And it's as CT, the timing is an arterial phase which is done typically after 30 seconds, portovenous phase approximately after one minute and delay phase which obtained after five minutes. The arterial phase is used to detect hypervascular lesion and it's essential in a case of HCC. Both venous and delay phase provide information on a lesion washout as in case of metastasis for evaluation of late enhancement as a case of cholangiocarcinoma and we can look for a patency of the portal and hepatic venous system. So let us zoom to see some examples. This is T2 sequence, and we can see bright signal lesion here, and subtle brightness here. This lesion as bright as the CSF, and show no contrast enhancement, and tend to be a simple liver cyst. And this case show arterial enhancement, and it's turned to be an HCC. This is example of cavernous hemangioma and it shows classic nodular peripheral enhancement in arterial phase, followed by persistent and progressive enhancement centrally in delay phase, which called centripetal enhancements. This is a case of cirrhotic liver with a large HCC. We can see this is arterial phase and this is a portovenous phase. There is blush of enhancement in this area, in arterial phase, that show feeling defects in the right portal vein and wash out.
so there is a thrombosis in the right portal vein and it's not a just a plant thrombus but it's a tumor thrombus because of that early arterial enhancement also the same area show bright DWI and low ADC map which confirming the high cellularity tumor within the portal vein let us talk a little bit about hepatobiliary agent like EOVIST and these agents have hepatic excretion which allow the image in hepatobiliary phase at approximately 20 minutes following injection it's useful for diagnosis of focal nodular hyperplasia as this tumor contains functioning hepatocytes and show retained contrast in the hepatobiliary phase other lesions like cysts, metastasis, hemangioma, adenoma, HCC are not containing interlobular hepatic duct and thus will appear hypoenhancing relative to the liver parenchyma in hepatobiliary phase as we can see in this example a comparison between a con extracellular contrast and hepatobiliary contrasts this is a T1 image we can see an iso intense liver lesion in extracellular contrast enhancement it show arterial enhancement and retain some enhancement in the venous and delay phase and this is not specific for any lesion as you can see in adenoma in FNH and maybe hypervascular metastasis but in hepatobiliary contrast we can see the lesion taking the contrast in arterial phase and it retained contrast even in the hepatobiliary phase that indicating the lesion has interlobular hepatic ducts which classic case of focal nodular hyperplasia so in conclusion MRI is an important non-invasive modality for liver lesion workup T1 sequence is important to localize the fat containing lesion and hemorrhagic foci and we can use in and out of phase to differentiating between fat and hemorrhage also T1 with contrast is important to characterize the enhancement within the, within, within the lesion specifically looking for pattern of early enhancement wash out and delay enhancement also we can look for liver vascular patency and differentiating between bland and tumor thrombosis the hepatobiliary contrast is useful to diagnosis of FNH and also can be used to distinguish between dysplastic nodule and HCC in a cirrhotic liver T2 sequence can be useful to detect benign lesion like cysts and hemangioma also it's great to identify iron deposition disease diffusion weight image is useful to localize the pathology and also we can assess the restricted diffusion characterization of the cellular tumor MRCP is an important technique if biliary pathology is suspected and thank you for watching